is a beast. Look how good it runs. Pretty much got a brand new motor. They rebuilt it from the block up. Let's go do some crawling, boys. All right, boys, so before this video starts, those of you that have followed the channel know that this is my 2008 Jeep Wrangler, and it doesn't really get to go off-roading too much. It's basically a mall crawler. I wanna keep it in this kind of condition, but you know what? Check this out, guys. We got ourselves a bogger. This is a 97 Jeep Wrangler, and it's extended six inches front and rear. Check out the beef on the suspension. Everything was done by a shop and it's pretty much like a kit. This was my buddy's Jeep that he was building, but we ended up working out a deal, and now we're gonna have some fun on it and take it to the woods. Drop a like on this video if you're excited for this. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun on it. It does need some work. The interior is kind of in bad shape, but you know what? We're gonna put our own touches to it and take care of all of that. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. Today we are working on a 2010 BMW X3. This is my buddy's mom's car and the problem she's having is there's a bunch of lights on the dash that are on and so with the scanner I was able to find a couple of codes that were leading to this transfer case solenoid. So we're going to give that a shot and hopefully that takes care of it. I'm going to show you what the lights are. You got the 4x4 light, the ABS, and I think the parking light, the e-brake, which it has a manual e-brake. It's not an electronic one, so that's kind of weird. But I think all of those have to do with something with this. And this is like $1,000 at the dealer, but you could go buy a gear. There's like a little plastic gear inside of here. We're going to take the old one apart and see if I could show you guys. That thing's like $5, but we just went ahead and got an aftermarket one. So let's go ahead and get the car on the lift and get to work. Taking a closer look on the engine, we pretty much have the identical problem that we had on my X5, which is that little valve cover gasket. You can see it's already coming out and it's like pretty bad once you get in there, but I don't think we're gonna be doing it. This car has 150,000 miles. So it's got 152,000 miles. It doesn't run bad actually. 
So there we go, we got the airbag light that keeps popping up. Something saying that the module's not receiving some kind of signal. I'm not gonna worry about that right now, but pretty much what we wanna take care of is the 4x4 light, the ABS light, and the brake. As you can see, the brake is down. Alright guys, so underneath the BMW here, and she's definitely got a leak, which is not looking good, but I think it is coming from that valve cover like we've seen earlier. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and get started. So pretty much you just have to take this transfer case support bar, which has four 13 millimeter bolts, and then you have this one 18 mil that goes through the rubber bushing. And since I don't really have a high enough jack, I need to get one, I'm just going to be using that post. It should do the trick. There we go, that's the last bolt. Now this bracket should just get out of the way. The bolt was a little tricky getting it out because I didn't want to remove the exhaust. But now that that's out of the way, you just have to loosen up this heat shield and then the transfer case motor is right over there. All right, so now that we got this bracket out of the way, we're just gonna leave it hanging just like that. All I did was take the one bolt off for this heat shield and kind of bent it down. Now we have plenty of room to the transfer case motor. Looks like two plugs and four bolts. Let's get it out, boys. Here's the old one. Here's the new aftermarket. They pretty much look identical. We're gonna go ahead and take this one apart and see if we can find out why it went bad. Okay guys, so we got the actuator taken apart and look at the wear and tear on the drive gear. We got some right there and over here. And the crazy thing is, this is only a $5 part and we didn't really have to go with the aftermarket one, but this unit complete at the dealer is over $1,000. That is just insane. Go ahead and get the new aftermarket installed and go from there. Got everything back together it went back a whole lot quicker the only tricky part is getting this 18 mil bolt off the bushing kind of hard to get a socket or a wrench on it there's not a very good opening but with a little bit of time and patience it came right out without having to remove the exhaust now it's time for the moment of truth let's go in and lower this car and see if that fixed her up all right guys so we got the bmw outside i just cleared all the codes with the scanner and we are looking good. I took it for a couple miles to go get some oil. We're gonna do an oil change on it. 
and I also cleaned it up. Let's get inside real quick. Oil checks out good. That's how you check it right there. So that's pretty awesome. And we are looking good. I'm gonna run to O'Reilly's and grab a sticker real quick for her so that she knows that. But yeah, the motor runs solid and awesome. We don't have any lights on. All right guys, so that's pretty much gonna do it for this episode. She's gonna be really happy that we got the car fixed at a minimum cost since it was kind of a safety concern for her. She has a grandkid. But with all this said, thanks guys for all the love and support. If you enjoy more DIY videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Give this video a like, share it, grow this community together and reach out to more people. Thanks for watching. I'm out. I'll catch y'all in the next one.